Hello and welcome to another preview show here at Vitality Stadium. Both myself and Matchday commentator Chris Temple will be going through everything AFC Bournemouth in the next half an hour or so and we might even be joined by a very special guest so make sure you stay tuned. Let's take a look at what's coming up. We'll be looking back at that game at Anfield just under two weeks ago. The under-21s also have a big Premier League Cup game here on Sunday. And finally we'll be looking ahead to tomorrow's game against Wolves here at Vitality Stadium. Well, first of all, we're going to start back at Anfield, Chris. That was always going to be a, a really tough one, wasn't it? Liverpool are absolutely flying. I, I've, I've lost count this tire, this season of how many times we've mentioned about taking the chances and that, that early chance in the game that went begging. Um, and after that, you know, when Liverpool get a couple of goals up, it's, it's a very long way back from there. Bournemouth have come back and you know got something at Anfield in the past, but uh, yeah, w once the third goes in, it's, it's all over really. Um, I don't think Liverpool needed to play that well to win. We, we've got to put some context in it on it that there was quite a significant number of key players missing. I mean, you look at the bench actually at Liverpool um, with the likes of you know Sam Surridge and Kyle Taylor and, and Jack Simpson and people. It was a very inexperienced bench. And I think Lise Mousset was probably the most experienced player on it. So, um, you know, a bit of a bit of shuffling around with players. You know, Charlie Daniels not available. Nathaniel Klein obviously wasn't available. Um, and obviously Callum and, and David Brooks still missing. So uh, I think that, that has to be bore in mind that, you know, it, it was you want to go the, to those places with everybody available, clicking, firing. Um, and, you know, Ed the Gaffer didn't have everybody available. Saying that, you know... <sighs> Possibly there was a, a bit of a feeling that when the second goal went in, it, maybe there wasn't quite as much fight and spirit as people would like to have seen. But I think that they're the games that are bonus points if you get anything in those games. So um, it's just, as far as I look at it now, it's another one of the big six ticked off for the second time. Uh, and soon they'll all be ticked off. So uh, let's keep clicking to that fact. Absolutely. Will you say that in the next couple of weeks? We've, of course, got Manchester City and Arsenal, Liverpool away. It was it was always one that was going to be tough. And now it's out the way they can focus on what's ahead. Yeah. And unfortunately, as you say, what is ahead is, you know, Wolves here, but then Arsenal and Man City the rest of the week. Um, but then, as, as people know, the fixtures do... I say ease up, this is the Premier League, but in terms of the intensity of the opposition, they do get a bit kinder towards the end of the season. And that's where, you know, if you can pick up an odd point here or there over the course of the next uh, week or so, I think, you know, certainly looking for three against Wolves, but if you can pick up a point from Arsenal or Man City, uh, again, just the, the spirit and the, the belief it puts in everybody. We saw what the Chelsea result did straight after it. I know the results since then haven't really reflected that, but... You know, it just it just gives everybody a huge boost. So, um, yeah, the, the chase for seventh, depending on how this weekend's result could be, could be right back on. And when you think there have been a couple of sort of periods of the season where it's all felt a bit doom and gloom, the chase for seventh is still on, and that's that's again reflective of what a great start there was and, and how competitive the league is as well. And just going back to that Liverpool game, that Sadio Mane goal, the first one that went in, it looked as if it could have been just offside. What did you make of it? Not a, not a lot of luck against Liverpool with offside this season, because of course uh, Salah here was offside for the first goal, which again, and if you don't get those those little minor breaks, I mean that yes, it was an, a debatable one, um, possibly just offside. Um, you know, we've seen VAR hasn't necessarily really helped to clear up some offsides this season with the with the cameras that we'll have next season. But yeah, it's it's again it goes into the bracket of you need everything to fall your way away at the big clubs and the marginal calls don't go your way, it doesn't help. And the timing of the third goal as well, just after half time, how detrimental was that? Yeah, that's always tough and it has a couple of times this season that has happened. You come straight out after your half time team talk, worked out what's gone right or wrong in the first half and all of a sudden it's, it's up in ribbons because you've conceded the goal. Saying that they have scored a couple of important goals straight after half time as well, but I think yeah, Eddie would. I think he'd like to see the uh, certainly the, the goals conceded at any time, but straight after half time is is particularly frustrating when you've just been in the dressing room pointing out exactly the things you need to be aware of and the things you need to improve. So yeah, that's a little idiosyncrasy that I'm sure that the gaffer would like to see uh, d deleted. And those front three, three Firmino, Mane, and of course Salah. How hard are they to to play against? Well, unbelievable. I mean, that's again, you, that's where you need. You probably need your strongest back four. Um, you need your goalkeeper to have a great day. Um, you need all those things. I mean, the, the little lob over Boric. I and mean, it's just absolute class, isn't it? I mean, it's um, that's why they're they're right in the title hunt at the moment. That's why they're where they are. But there's no surprise. Um, you know, the, the boys have, have proved themselves. You know, the same quality of players were here playing for Chelsea and and didn't get much of a sniff. So. When they're on their day, though, very hard to stop. And our lads, they've now had a two-week break. They'll be firing on all cylinders ahead of the weekend, won't they? Those that are available will be. Um, there, there are still a few knocks knocking around. Obviously, Nathaniel Klein will be back. Um, Charlie Daniels, um, as far as we know, will be back. Um, David Brooks and Callum Wilson still a little bit off. Jefferson Lerma seems to have got rid of that ankle problem that he was uh, struggling with for a couple of weeks. So, yeah, one or two starting to come back. Um, but you certainly going into a little busy run of games now up to the international break, what is it, a month time, isn't it? So three games in a week coming up this week. Um, so, yeah, certainly you need the players firing. But two weeks off, uh, they've done a few different things. Um, Eddie was speaking about bringing in Matthew Syed to have a sort of, a, I guess, a psychological performance chat with the, the lads as well, the former table 
table tennis guy who's very much into the writing books about sports performance and stuff these days. They've done a few things differently and they opted not to go away this time, um, which some clubs do. Um, Eddie said it's, it's touch and go really, you know, it's, there's a financial consideration at one end, but also it's worked for them well sometimes. It hasn't worked so well other times. Um, on this occasion, they decided to stay here and get some work in. And also that's probably, they're probably also, I think a factor that with people out being out um, as well that they're going away to do their own rehab and it's you sort of you've got a bit of a fragmented squad so um, yeah they stayed behind the weather it's beautiful isn't it I mean why wouldn't you stay behind when you could go to Dubai or Tenerife or somewhere absolutely well as well as the game against Wolverhampton Wanderers this weekend our under 21s have a big Premier League Cup game coincidentally also against Liverpool let's take a look at what happened in their last outing in Group C Well, a first half goal from Jaden Anthony there saw the Cherries pick up a point on the road at West Brom in the last Group C game. Chris, they're here at Vitality Stadium on Sunday. Another really good opportunity for them to play here and get some more experience. Looks like it's going to be an exciting occasion as well. They're, they're hoping for a crowd of uh, around about 3,000, which would be, you know, you think most of these players will not play in front of crowds that big very often. Uh, with the greatest respect to under 21 level, um, obviously some of them will go out and play on loan at lower league clubs and will get, you know, three or four or 5,000 watching, I'm sure. But most of the under 21 games are played in front of a handful of people um, when you go away to clubs like Liverpool and West Brom and people of course they, they have a bit more local following of bigger clubs but yeah so it's going to be a fantastic day on, on Sunday I think um, obviously qualification already secured which is brilliant you can play with a bit of freedom um, but I, I guess you know Sean Cooper and the management team won't be looking like that they'll be looking at continuing the good work they've been doing um, and I think any any sort of time you get to play on the, the main stage you know the, the first team pitch and with the crowd I mean 3,000 people in here that is that is a noticeable crowd um, so and I, I think you know the club you're, you're going to be doing the PA and there's, the, the big screens are on and there's programs and it's a full-on match day experience really so I think it's really really useful for the lads who aren't out on loan and, and are just training week in week out to get, to get that sort of motivation of a, a big stage and obviously with a view to building more momentum towards later in the competition. And as you said they're already through but they're playing to win the group how much of a psychological boost will that give them going into the last 16? Yeah always and I mean what a scout Liverpool would be you know if you, if you can get a result against a team of Liverpool's class again the, the under 21 set up at the bigger clubs you know they've got such depth of resources a lot of their best under 21s are out on loan actually as, as is the case here now as well um, so you know their I guess their under 21s aren't as probably as strong as they they realistically are in terms of the, the people they've got available but still you know Liverpool under 21s are not going to be they're, they're not it's not like playing the dog and duck they're going to be they're going to be handy so yeah and Bournemouth I'm liking what I'm seeing at the moment the progress that's being made at the under 18 level with how well the youth cup's been going and obviously that's coming up next week we'll talk about that next week um, the under 21s are having a good little run in the Premier League Cup as well so I think we are starting to see some fruit being born it's been a, a criticism if there is to be one that the academy got left behind a little bit by the first team's progress I've mentioned it several times on, the, on this programme this season so I think now these are you know this is a nice little period where Alan Connell with the 18s and Sean Cooper and Mark Molesley with the 21s are really starting to, to, to make some marks here. And we see the likes of Kyle Taylor and Andy Offerball, Mark Travers, they're always training with the first team, so it's so important for them to get game time themselves, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, Kyle Taylor, you know, he, bless him, he came on, or he started rather against Brighton in the Cup here, didn't he? It, it didn't go that well for the team that day, not just for him. Um, he was on the bench at Liverpool last week, which I'm sure was a great thrill for, for a lad of his quality. New contract relatively recently, so yeah, for, for him and for Namdi, training day in day out with these players they will certainly be improving Mark Travers is the, is the one Mark Travers is you know he's he's the one they talk about as 
potentially, you know, a long-term first-team goalkeeper here. So I'm really excited to, to see how he's going to progress over the course of the next few months. Training with, you know, two internationals, Arta Boric and Azmir Begovic, um, every single day on the training ground as well. With Neil Moss, obviously, very experienced goalkeeping coach as well. Um, so, yeah, I, I think for those guys, it's a, it's a great opportunity. And for them as well, the, the motivating factor, because training every day is one thing, but actually having the chance to showcase at your own level, um, at under-21 level, what you can do. A uh, huge chance for them as well. And as you touched upon earlier, some of the under 21s, they've gone out on loan. It could be a real opportunity for some of the under 18s then to step up and, and get some more experience. Yeah, and of course, contracts are, are not done and dusted at this stage. You know, often there'll be, you know, one or two year deals at that sort of level. Um, sometimes even less than that. Um, if, if you're not quite sure about a player, you'll say, OK, come in, let's show us what you can do, earn yourself a stay. Lots of players come and go through the door at academy level and you don't ever hear sight nor sound of them again, really. Um, they maybe have to go off and, and uh, sort of start again, you know, maybe at a lower level. Um, so, yeah, for some of the under-18s that have been part of that great FA Youth Cup run, this is a chance now with, you know, as you say, the likes of Jordan Holmes and other people have gone away and, and getting loan spells for the second half of the season now as well. Um, Scottish, a lot of Scottish interest at the moment in the Cherries under 21. So it is a, a real opportunity. There are places up for grabs and not just places up for grabs in front of a big crowd in a big game, but also potentially contract defining performances. You know, there'll be, coming, there'll be decisions being made about con contracts. Some have been made already, I'm sure, in the coaches' minds. Some will be being made around about now um, about who's going to stay on beyond the summer. And Sean Cooper, he's come in halfway through the season. That can't have been easy for the squad, but they've reached the final of the Central League Cup. They're going well in the Premier League Cup and they've got a, a Hampshire Senior Cup quarterfinals play as well. So things are looking looking bright for them. Aren't they? Yeah, they obviously had a bit of transition. You know, Mark, Mark Molsey's been around the squad for a while as well. So there's, that, I guess, a bit of consistency there. But yeah, I mean, Sean Cooper's come, come in and done a great job. You know, there's, there's a great familiarity among the coaching staff right through from the age groups, you know, up to 18s and 21s. The coaches that, you know, Eddie Howe at the top knows and trusts um, and has worked with and has played with as well. Um, and I think, you know, you're seeing they've all got the same sort of mentality. Everyone's trying to be playing the same way. It is a sort of a top to bottom feel in terms of the, the methodology and the, the ethos, I guess, of the club. So from that point of view, yeah, Sean Cooper has, has come in and had a great impact. Um, Alan Connell's done the same with the under 18s and both very much seem to be heading in the right direction. Absolutely. Well, if you do want to come along on Sunday, it's a 1pm kickoff here at Vitality Stadium. Tickets are available on tickets.afcv.co.uk. But of course, here on Saturday is the visit of Wolves and we have a very special guest coming to preview after we look back at what happened last time at Vitality Stadium against Wolves. Half of the championship table meet at the Gold Sands this evening as AFC Bournemouth take on Wolverhampton Wanderers. The away side especially come into this game full of confidence having won their last three matches fairly convincingly in the Skybet Championship. ball forward might fall for Wilson as well which it does now he tries to get the cross in and he finds the cross as well oh what a start for Bournemouth it's taken them 10 minutes to take the lead and Jan Kermigan has got it his 10th goal of the season but he owes a huge amount of credit to Callum Wilson it didn't look as though the cross was on but he found Kermigan who finished expertly. Here comes the delivery again. Goalkeeper's come and he's dropped it. And the second time of asking is able to hold that. It's Pew. Pew's continued his run, just couldn't quite get the return back to him. And in the end, the shot is deflected behind for a corner. It's been a really positive start for AFC Bournemouth here. Here's a Phoebe. A Phoebe with the ball in. Only half cleared though by Bournemouth. And they do clear the ball away to safety. Really good drop of the shoulder. Oh, and he's found Benic of Phoebe! And Wolverhampton Wanderers are back on level terms. And it's a lovely finish by Benic of Phoebe. His sixth goal since joining from the MK Dons. And a celebration to match as well. What a pass it was to him, though. It was Kevin McDonald with the pass. And he coolly slotted the ball away. Passed out to Borat. Wilson with the strike. Good save by Thomas Kushak in. The Wolverhampton Wanderers goal. You might think about the shot, Benekophobic. Full of confidence, and well, he did really well to work the angle. 
In the end, the shot far too close to the goalkeeper. He's got a man out to the left-hand side of him. McDonald goes alone and not too far wide either. Fantastic run by the Scotsman. Kermigan to Wilson, who goes down, surely a penalty. And James Lennington points to the spot. And now they want a red card to the home support. Was it just outside the area? Kermigan with the penalty. Oh, he maybe should have saved it. And Thomas Kuchak knows it. But the French with Jan Kermigan gets his second of the game. 33-year-old with his 11th of the season. And I think Thomas Kuchak will know that he perhaps should have kept the penalty out. Pugh looking for Wilson. There's been a handful today, Callum Wilson. And, well, whether that was a shot or a cross, there was no one gambling at the far post to tap the ball home. Wilson's done well to win the ball back. Pugh with the strike off the line by Stearman. The ball. Francis, Francis with a wonderful delivery. And it's really well defended as well by Doherty at the back post. Kermigan, what a hat trick, remember. Wilson. Wilson! Can see what he was trying to do. Well, they've combined beautifully this evening. Have Kermigan and Wilson up front for Bournemouth. And there goes the full time whistle. Well, two goals from Jan Kermigan there saw the Cherries pick up all three points. And I'm delighted to say that we are joined by a very special guest club captain. Simon Francis joins us to preview the game against Wolves this weekend. Franny, Frano, thank you for joining us. Just how impressed have you been with Wolves this season? Very impressed, yeah. Probably surprised me really. I think the surprise package of the uh, Premier League this season, they've been excellent. Um, I think a lot of teams have maybe underestimated them like they did with us in the first season. We had some massive results and... They've picked up some huge wins, especially against the big teams as well. Um, and they're, they're, they're really a team that we want to be chasing um, to, to get that seventh spot. So I think tomorrow's game is crucial, really, that we get something from it um, so we can keep catching them. Chris, since that game back in 2015, Wolves have come a long way, haven't they? Yeah, I mean, you look at the stats this season and how they've attacked the Premier League. I mean, seventh at the moment in the, in the box seat for seventh. As Frano says, if, if the Cherries can, can win this game tomorrow, then it does actually pull them back to within three points. And seventh all of a sudden is a very live possibility. But the way Wolves play, they have a, a quite a unique style. We saw it in the game up there earlier in the season where they were happy to sit back and actually counter-attack on, on home soil. But they've got more points at this stage of the season as a newly promoted team than the last 15 years, I think. So they, they, that's, uh, I guess, a good level as to what, what they have achieved so far this season. Um, and the transition from the Championship to the Premier League is is not an easy one, particularly if you try and change things. And I think, I don't know if you agree, Frano, they haven't actually changed that much from the Championship. They seem to be similar with their philosophy and it's actually worked pretty well in the league for them. Yes, yeah, it's, it's interesting really because in the Championship, I, I think they dominated a lot more of the ball than they have this season. But like you said, they've, they've been happy to sit off the ball, uh, let the other team have it and then counter-attack, which they have done excellently, especially against the top teams. And they've shown some great home form and then they've gone away from home as well and picked up some massive results. So... It's a really tough game for us tomorrow, um, but like we've already mentioned, if, if we can win tomorrow, it really puts us in a great opportunity to try and gain that seventh spot, which I think is still there for us. Um, of course, we've got to improve our away form, uh, which is going to be big coming up, but tomorrow is the big one. And as an injured player, you obviously won't be involved. How much of a role do you play on a match day? Do you like to go in the dressing room before the game, before watching off in the stands? Yeah, I'll still go in, of course. Um, it's harder, certainly now, watching games from the sidelines. I'm not used to it, still getting used to that that aspect of things but yeah I'll be in the changing room wishing the boys luck but I don't want to be in there for, the, for a long time you know it's hard hanging around watching them get ready because you, you wish you were there yourself so I'll be up in the uh, box or in the stand watching the game with the other lads injured or, or, or not involved so um, yeah cheering them on but my role doesn't change too much it's just one of them where you're, you're off the pitch instead of on it trying to motivate them um, but being there wherever I can. And Chris, we like to pick out the danger men before a game. They've got the likes of Reba Neves and Jao Moutinho. They're, they're the big players, aren't they? Yeah, Raul Jimenez obviously has been banging the goals in it as well as we saw. You know, they, they've gone with the, the foreign approach. It's worked a lot for them. You know, there's, it hasn't taken a lot of their players too much time to get used to English football. Even the, the new guys they brought in, you, Matt Doherty, even at right back, has been popping up with, with the goals as well. He's been, a, uh, I guess, a surprise source of goals for them as well. So they really have clicked. And actually, we saw they had some strength come off the bench. He's not, not afraid to use his subs quite early on. I think he changed his whole front three in the game game and uh, at Molyneux just before Christmas so yeah they're, they're, they're the depth of their squad it's, it's the one thing that can test you when you come to this level is if you do have a few problems um, how deep is your squad and are the, are the next best players 
up to the standard. And Wolves have proved that their squad at the moment, here we are, what, 11 games to go in the season, whatever it is, um, that they're, they're riding the hunt and off the tails of the big six. And that squad, they pulled off some fantastic results, none more so, more, none more so than that 3-1 win against Spurs up at Wembley. Yeah, I mean, they've, that's a great result. A couple of great ones at home. Molyneux's a pretty fearsome place to go. It's pretty fearsome the, the day we were all there before Christmas, even though the weather was awful. But yeah, that, so the home form has been the backbone, but they have, you know, they won at Everton recently as well, you know, 3-1. So yeah, they, they have put in a, a couple of results and even their cup draw, you know, look at the cup draw at home to Man United. They'll be thinking they can got a chance of winning the FA Cup this season as well. So well, that would be an unbelievable season for them um, coming newly into the league, absolutely. And Franny, great to be back at home as well. We've had some great results here in the last few weeks, that West Ham one and of course Chelsea as well. Yeah, I think our home form has been vital this season. Um, we know we haven't performed or, or at least got the results that we wanted to away from um, home. We know we want to improve that. It's been kind of hit and miss over the seasons. We've, we've either, either done well away from home and not, not so well at home or it's been vice versa. And certainly this season we've been excellent at home. Uh, that's going to be massive tomorrow with the games coming up as well. But yeah, the away form is something we want to improve, especially going to Arsenal in midweek. That'll be important to try and get something there. But um, I think the fans have been been excellent this season. They've really got behind the players, especially in uh, important times of the season when we've needed them to. And the lads will feel confident, certainly tomorrow, against a Wolves team who, you know, who, who thought we would have been saying it, but we're chasing them to try and get to seventh spot. And that's really an aim for us. And um, it'll certainly be a marker for us tomorrow to see where we're at and what we can give against Wolves tomorrow. And just before we let you go, we have to, of course, ask how your recovery is going and, and how you're feeling at the moment. Yeah, I'm feeling good. Yeah, had a had a little break with the family, which was nice, a bit of warm weather rehab. Um, it's always nice to have a change of scenery, certainly. You know, it's it's a long time I'm going to be out, um, anything between six and nine months. So to come in here every single day is tough mentally. It's not just the physical aspect of things. To see the lads training every day is hard, um, but it's also a motivational tool for you as well. You know, I like watching the lads go out training, thinking I'm going to be there hopefully next season as soon as possible. So, um, yeah, it's certainly a long road, but I'm getting there and things are looking well. Well, we hope to see you back out there very, very shortly. And thank, thank you. you very much for your, your time and joining us this morning. That's all we've got time for today. If you are coming to Vitality Stadium over the weekend, we hope you enjoy your visit with us. If not, make sure you keep an eye across all of our social media channels and our website for the latest updates. Thanks for joining us.